Music has the power to transport us. It can make us laugh, cry, or fill us with a sense of wonder. But the magic doesn't just happen by itself. It takes a talented musician and their instrument to weave those sonic stories. Today, we're setting our sights on a versatile and expressive member of the woodwind family. The clarinet, have you ever been captivated by the soaring melody of a clarinet solo or the rich, warm tones that blend seamlessly within an orchestra? This seemingly simple instrument with a single reed boasts a rich history and a surprising amount of complexity. So buckle up, music enthusiasts, because we're about to embark on a journey through time, exploring the evolution of the clarinet and how it became the beloved instrument it is today. The story of the clarinet doesn't start in a fancy concert hall, but stretches back millennia. Believe it or not, instruments with a similar design have been around for thousands of years, as early as 3000 BC in the cradle of civilization. Ancient Egypt, musicians were playing single reed instruments made from cane tubes. These early prototypes laid the groundwork for what would eventually become the clarinet, Fast forward through the centuries, and we find similar instruments popping up across the Near East and beyond. From Spain to Eastern Europe, even Sardinia, these forerunners of the clarinet resonated with folks and musicians. Interestingly, even in 18th century Wales, a folk instrument called the pipgorn, made of bone or elder wood, shared a resemblance to these ancient single reed instruments. Throughout the Middle Ages and up to the 17th century, single reed instruments remained a mainstay in folk music across Europe. However, they were primarily associated with the common people and rarely found their way into the more prestigious classical settings. Think lively jigs at village fairs or melancholic tunes accompanying stories around a campfire. These instruments were the voice of the people, expressing their joys and sorrows through music. But hold on, folks. The story takes a fascinating turn around 1690. Enter Johann Christoph Denner, a renowned instrument maker from Nuremberg, Germany. Denner, a master of his craft, wasn't just content with making recorders, flutes, oboes, and bassoons. He had a vision, a dream of creating a new instrument with a unique voice. And so, the modern clarinet, as we know it, was born. Denner's early creation resembled a recorder, made of three parts and sporting just two keys. It was a simple design. Yet, it laid the foundation for what was to come. Legend has it that Denner's son might have been the one to add the flared bell, a defining feature of the modern clarinet. The impact was immediate. Composers like Handel, Gluick, and Telemann started incorporating parts specifically written for this exciting new instrument. These early clarinets, often crafted from boxwood or even plum or pearwood, with the occasional touch of elegance like an ebony mouthpiece or an ivory body, began to grace the stages of Europe. The 18th century wasn't just about fancy new instruments. It was a period of refinement and evolution for the clarinet. Instrument makers saw the potential and started tinkering. The two key design gave way to five or even six keys, giving players more control over the pitch. This may seem like a minor change, but it significantly improved the instrument's capabilities. Composers and virtuoso performers were quick to seize the opportunity. They explored the unique range of the clarinet, from its ability to whisper the softest notes with incredible delicacy to producing loud, penetrating melodies. No wonder Mozart fell in love with the clarinet's expressive potential. His famous concerto for clarinet, composed in 1791, cemented the instrument's position as a worthy soloist, capable of holding its own in the grandest concert halls. By the year 1800, the clarinet had become a beloved and familiar voice in most orchestras. If you thought the 18th century was a whirlwind of changes, get ready for the 19th century. This is where the clarinet's identity truly solidified. Imagine instrument makers like masterminds in a workshop. They redesigned the arrangement of holes to improve intonation, added even more keys, and experimented with materials. Talk about a makeover! Composers like Spoffer and Weber became champions of the clarinet. 
Inspired by virtuosos who toured Europe, wowing crowds with their technical prowess, this led to a burst of concertos and chamber music specifically written to highlight the instrument's agility and wide range. Clarinet makers tried everything under the sun, from silver and brass to the exotic caucus wood from Jamaica. It was like a sonic arms race, but wood, particularly ebony from Africa, proved to be a favorite among French makers in the mid-19th century. Gradually, another type of wood, African blackwood, won the hearts of most instrument makers. Less heavy yet still incredibly sturdy, it became the go to material for clarinets that we know and love today. And so we arrive at the clarinets of our own times. While advancements continue, the basic design of a clarinet made after around 1850 hasn't changed dramatically. However, that doesn't mean there isn't room for variation. In fact, there are two main key systems in use today. The simpler Albert system is common in Germany and surrounding areas, while the more complex Bohm system is the standard just about everywhere else. Now, let's take a moment to break down the anatomy of a modern clarinet. It consists of five main parts, the mouthpiece. This is where the magic begins. A single, specially shaped cane reed is fixed to the mouthpiece. When the player blows into it, this reed vibrates, creating the sound. The barrel, also called the tuning socket, this small piece connects the mouthpiece to the rest of the instrument. It plays a crucial role in fine tuning the clarinet's pitch. The upper and lower joints. These are the main body of the clarinet, where you'll find most of the keys and holes. This is where the player covers and uncovers holes to change notes. The bell. This iconic flared part at the bottom of the clarinet doesn't just look cool. It amplifies the sound and gives it that characteristic warmth and richness. The world of clarinets is actually a whole family. You're probably most familiar with the standard B-flat and a clarinets, but there's much more to explore. The bass clarinet, much larger than its sibling with its curved bell, holds its own as a powerful voice in bands and orchestras. There's also the contrabass clarinet, a true behemoth, and the rarely seen E-flat clarinet, known for its high-pitched and piercingly bright sound. It's like having a whole orchestra within an instrument family, offering unique voices and a vast range of expression. The clarinet's journey has been long and adventurous, but it's far from over. Today, its sound is everywhere. From the grand concert halls, where it weaves melodies within the orchestral tapestry, to the smoky jazz clubs, where it improvises with playful energy, the clarinet has carved out its own unique place, 